One of the five pillars of Islam is the Hajj. Hajj is the pilgrimage that happens once every year. Muslims who make the Hajj travel to a city called Mecca located in Saudi Arabia. Hajj includes observing several religious practices, such as circling the Kaaba seven times, kissing the black stone, and running back and forth from the hills of Safa and Marwa. Why do Muslims do all of this? According to Al Hajj 27, Allah commands his followers, call all people to the pilgrimage. They will come to you on foot and on every lean camel from every distant path. In order for our Muslim friends to enter Jannah or paradise, it is required of them by Allah to take part in Hajj at least once in their lifetime. But the real question we need to be asking is where? Where do all of these practices come from? A close examination into the idolatrous origins of Islam reveals to us everything we need to know. In the year 629, the Prophet Muhammad entered Mecca and conquered it. During that time, the Kaaba had already existed and it was surrounded by more than 300 different idols. The Prophet entered Mecca, and at the time, there were 360 idols around the Kaaba. He started stabbing the idols with a stick he had in his hand and reciting, Truth, Islam, has come and falsehood, disbelief, has vanished. Initially, this seems like quite the noble and righteous thing for Muhammad to do. He entered Mecca and cleansed it of its idols. But what was so special about Mecca to begin with? Why did Muhammad want to make that place the center of Islamic worship? Muhammad and his early followers were surrounded by various tribes and nations who all practiced different forms of religion. For example, there were the Jews who followed the Torah, and there were others who believed in the Torah but also believed in other books along with it, such as the Talmud. Likewise, there were also the Christians, who believed in the inspired word of God. But there were also heretical Christians among them, who had believed in many fabricated stories about Jesus and Mary. Many of these stories did involve biblical characters, but they were not all true. For example, one of these stories included Jesus being able to speak from the cradle. Muhammad heard all of these stories, believed in them, and to no surprise, many of them are now in the Qur'an. Now here's an interesting fact about Islam. It was actually the pagans who prayed facing the Kaaba in Mecca. Muhammad and his early followers prayed while facing Jerusalem, just like the Jews. Muhammad thought that he could convince the Jews in Jerusalem that he was a prophet and convert them to Islam. Unfortunately for him, the Jews actually knew the Torah and they were able to distinguish between the inspired word of God and the fake stories that Muhammad believed in. As a result, the Jews rejected Muhammad. But suddenly, Allah came to Muhammad's rescue. Al-Baqarah 144 now we will make you turn towards a direction of prayer that will please you. So turn your face towards the sacred mosque in Mecca. Wherever you are, turn your faces towards it. So let's get the story straight. Muhammad heard all sorts of fabled stories about God's word and believed in them. He then tried to convince the Jews in Jerusalem to believe in what he did and was rejected. Allah's response is to tell Muhammad to just pray towards a place that makes him happy. So he ended up choosing the Kaaba in Mecca. Sahih 3366. I said, O oh Allah's Messenger, which mosque was first built on the surface of the earth? He said, Al Masjid al Haram in Mecca. I said, Which was built next? He replied, The mosque in Al Aqsa in Jerusalem. I said, what was the period of construction between the two? He said, 40 years. <laughs> Muhammad said that Abraham and Ishmael built the first temple in Mecca, 
And this happened 40 years before the temple in Jerusalem was built. <laughs> oh my. The temple in Jerusalem was built by King Solomon, who lived more than 1,000 years after Abraham did. You can't make this stuff up. Oh, unless you're Muhammad, of course. So now that we know why the Kaaba was chosen by Muhammad, let's talk about some of these practices that our Muslim friends take part in during Hajj. One of the practices we mentioned is walking in circles around the Kaaba, seven times in total to be exact. Why do Muslims do this? As I mentioned earlier, the Kaaba itself was originally a place for polytheistic pagan worship. And as it turns out, not much has changed. The highly respected Qur'an translator Abdullah Yusuf Ali wrote this about where the practice of circling the Kaaba came from. It will be noticed that the sun and the moon and the five planets got identified each with a living deity, god or goddess, with characteristics and qualities of its own. According to these ancient pagans, each of these seven cosmic objects in the sky were gods themselves who circled around the earth. Therefore, the pagans of Mecca circled the Kaaba seven times in order to honor and worship these seven planetary gods. This practice was adopted by Muhammad, and it continues today as part of the Hajj. Another practice our Muslim friends will take part in during the Hajj is kissing the black stone. As it turns out, this was another ritual performed by the pagans of ancient Arabia. Sahih 4376 We used to worship stones, and when we found a better stone than the first one, we would throw the first one and take the latter. These pagans would continually look for nicer and nicer stones to worship. Eventually, they came across the best stone that they could find, the black stone, and they decided to keep it in the Kaaba. What do our Muslim friends do on the Hajj even to this day? They kiss the black stone. Did Muhammad ever try to put a stop to this? Let's let Sahih 1597 answer that for us. Umar came near the black stone and kissed it and said, No doubt, I know that you are a stone and can neither benefit anyone nor harm anyone. Had I not seen Allah's messenger kissing you, I would not have kissed you. Umar was Muhammad's second in charge. Even he knew that what they were doing was wrong. But Muhammad's followers did it anyways, simply because they saw their prophet doing it too. Centuries later, millions of people still follow in this pagan act because of that same man. Running to and from the hills of Safa and Marwa, this was yet another form of worship the early pagans of Mecca would do. Unfortunately for Muhammad, even his earliest followers knew this. Sahih 4496 I asked Anas bin Malik about Safa and Marwa. Anas replied, We used to consider going around them a custom of the pre-Islamic period of ignorance. So when Islam came, we gave up going around them. Then Allah revealed, Verily, Safa and Marwa, the two mountains at Mecca, are among the symbols of Allah. So it is not harmful of those who perform the hajj of the house of Allah or perform the umrah to ambulate, tawaf, between them. The practice of running back and forth between Safa and Marwa was clearly understood to be an act of paganism, even by Muhammad's earliest followers. But just like Muhammad adopted the Kaaba in Mecca, he also adopted the paganistic practices that revolved around it. In order for our Muslim friends to enter Jannah, they are required to take part in the Hajj. They are required to travel to a place that was, and still is, an epicenter 
for idolatry. They are required to circle a shrine that was purpose-built for idolatry. They are required to kiss a black stone that was specifically chosen for idolatry. They are required to run back and forth between two hills that symbolize idolatry. Our Muslim friends are required by their God and their prophet to fully adopt and embrace idolatry because Islam and idolatry are a match made in Jannah. Let's remember to be consistently in prayer for our Muslim friends. Until next time, Salam.